Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. This may be the final episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide before we do our final world tour. So today we're going to be tackling one of the things that I've been putting off for a while but really needs doing before we can really call the museum project a success and that is the mob exhibit. As you can see right here from an episode we did a while ago we have the zombie family as I've been thinking of them. We've got a bunch of different examples of the different types of zombies that you can find in Minecraft starting from the regular zombie, the baby, the drowned, the husk and finally actually one of my favorite mobs that we've encountered the entire season. This is a baby zombie villager chicken jockey and the chicken is still laying eggs so clearly the chicken is having a grand old time inside of there. A little quick update on the architecture of the museum before we continue because I've mostly been fleshing out my idea for the archways in the roof and if I take to the sky here you'll be able to see that yeah I've been been putting a little bit of work in between episodes. The bastion rampart over there looming and I'm gonna have to figure out how on earth we contain that thing but I wanted to have this kind of archway roof design kind of connected towards the center a little bit forward because this one starts a little bit inset to the giant room down here but I, I like having these archways kind of connect at a central point here basically centered more or less on the center of the room below so the end portal in that end island diorama that's in the center basically is the centerpiece of the entire museum and I'm considering what we're going to do with the beacon after this because I will need the beacon for today's project. Today's project is going to start down here where for a long time I have had my eyes on this zombie spawner. The zombie spawner down here was one of the reasons that I really wanted to make the museum here aside from the stronghold and an ocean monument being out there. We had a couple of spawners nearby which would be perfect for an exhibit about mob spawning. And so this one's been open to the air for a while. We're not going to be able to activate it right away, but I've made a couple of modifications to see if we can make this into an active exhibit for the museum. So underneath the cobblestone at the sides here, all of which I think is pretty natural for the original dungeon, I might have removed a little bit of it as I was excavating this area, but around the outside here on our trademark red concrete, I've put down a whole bunch of redstone wire leading to all of the lamps, and it's just a repeater into a block underneath each of the lamps. As I turn them off, you'll notice they turn off in sequence. And if there was a roof over the top of this thing and it was completely dark in the interior, that would start to spawn zombies. And this is going to be the introductory area to the mob exhibit. Up there, we're starting a spiral staircase that's gonna lead down into this room and give players access to this zombie spawner before they walk on. And I think we're probably going to move them in this direction. And then that's going to lead into the mob exhibit where each of the mobs of the game are going to be behind glass if I can possibly contain them there here in the overworld. We're also going to have a quick trip into the nether so that we can include live piglins in this one because of course piglin bartering is going to have to come into effect at some point. But for today at least I want to try and get every mob it's possible to acquire in the overworld including passive mobs as well. We're not just going to do hostile mobs we'll do a bunch of the others as well, golems as well, and whatever we can get our hands on. Today, we're going to be making the mob exhibit. You might also notice there are a few dispensers set into the floor. There is also one just behind there. And the idea behind that is that if people did come to the museum, and it's actually getting dark right now, so I might be able to show you as an example here, if the zombies end up spawning inside of this room, we also want a way of getting rid of the zombies because, yeah, there would be no point in just leaving the zombies wandering around in here, and in theory, the mob spawner will start to spawn more of them, although I'm fairly certain there is a cap on the amount of mobs that can be around this spawner. So once it spawned a decent handful of zombies, it probably wasn't going to bring any more in. But there we go. Okay, we got four. This is a good way to demonstrate how this is all going to work. This button on the ground here connects to those four dispensers. And what I decided we should do to clear that room of zombies, basically just so that we don't have a ton of zombies wandering around inside of here, is to dispense lava from the floor. And the lava on those four points just kind of spills out, covers the entire room, and anything that's not standing on the chest is going to start burning. Now this zombie is cleverer than the others and managed to stay up there on the chest. It took a little bit of burning damage and will probably just end up burning in the sun if we don't put a roof on this before that. So we could put a slab on top of the spawner and the chest, but eventually the zombies are just going to wander off those and they'll end up burning in the lava. And it's a good way of being able to clear this room entirely whilst 
having the lava drain away on a second button press, allowing the room to look a little bit clearer so that you can actually see what's going on inside of here. So with this as the entrance to the mob exhibit, I want to get started on the spiral staircase that's going to lead folks down here, and then from there we're going to dig out a network of tunnels which is going to contain and display each of the mobs in Minecraft. And we're obviously going to have to work out how to get the spider jockey from here down there. I'm thinking we can probably just try and flush it down there using some water buckets or something. And we'll do something similar for the zombie family in here so that finally they can end up in a place that seems a little bit less temporary than just leaving them here in the main exhibition hall of the museum. So a short amount of time later, the spiral staircase is all in place and I've been working a little bit on the structure of the mob exhibit itself. I figure as you reach the bottom of the staircase, because you're kind of on the opposite side of where I planned all of the features around the spawner, this introductory wall here could have a bunch of information about what mobs are, just kind of the other creatures that you will find around the world, maybe some definitions of what a hostile mob versus a passive mob is, and then you get into introducing the cast of characters that we know and love from the Minecraft world. I think on the right hand side here, I wanted to have the passive mobs as a nice gentle introduction opposite the zombie spawner, which is a bit more of a controlled environment. And then as you progress around the exhibit here, the passive mobs continue to the right. But on the left hand side here, down this corridor, you have all of the growling and hissing of the hostile mob exhibit. And I think each of these sides is going to be more kind of specifically themed, I guess, than I expected it to be. So for a start, I wanted to have all of the zombie variants together as they are upstairs in the main hall exhibit right now. So we have the zombie, the baby zombie, the chicken jockey. We wanted a tank for the drowned, so I ended up putting in a, a little bit more landscape for that one, just to show that, you know, the drowned can survive underwater and are found underwater. And then husks, of course, we needed a little desert diorama. But each of these is just contained within a 4x4x4 cube with some grey stained glass on the front, and I figured that would be enough for most mobs. With a couple of exceptions, we will, of course, be capturing a ravager and a ghast that might need a little bit more room just so that they could, you know, run around or float around a little bit to show their kind of full extent of what they can do. We've also got a creeper here on the end, we will have a creeper here on the end, and I assume the room next door is going to need a charged creeper, so we will do our best to see if we can get hold of one of those. On the opposite side over here, we started with a skeleton and a spider, of course, the two basics, then combined them to get a spider jockey, and this one needed a special roof in there because, of course, if the spider starts to climb the wall, the jockey, the skeleton that's riding it, will end up getting trapped in the ceiling. And I am a little bit worried about the spider falling and dying inside of here, so I might end up lowering the roof a little bit, but I'm fairly certain that the spider wouldn't be able to take full damage if it was only coming down from a four block height. So we'll see how that goes. But basically I expect the spider jockey to just climb one wall and kind of stick there. <laughs> so I'm not expecting it to do a whole lot whilst it's in this enclosure, but it would be a bit of a shame if the skeleton ended up suffocating in the ceiling, hence, yeah, the glass. There's a double layer of glass up there. A witch is going to go in here, of course. We can have a snowy diorama for a stray opposite the husk, because they were added at the same time, by a specific variants of the mobs. And then a cave spider, kind of opposite the creeper, in terms of just how much I'm afraid of them, I suppose. And, yeah, we wanted to have an abandoned mineshaft area with all of the cobwebs. Naturally, we couldn't fit a cave spider spawner in there, of course, but... I think it's nice to have the cobwebs in there to demonstrate that that is where you will find them and that an artificial environment is required for the spawning of cave spiders because they don't appear naturally in the world like some of the other mobs do. Here opposite the passive mobs, I was thinking about making a giant fish tank along this wall, but then it occurred to me that we also need to include guardians in this exhibit and in this direction, probably about, you know, 100 or so blocks, probably a little bit more, we have the Ocean Monument. And one of the things I wanted to do with this is actually create a path out to the Ocean Monument so we can create a kind of observation deck of sorts. Now, what I'm going to do is have the staircase actually peel off in this direction as well and have it come down here so that once we get through, oh, apparently a flooded cave, well, that's kind of thematically appropriate, I suppose. Uh, once we get through this section of the cave and out the landscape on the other side, we should be able to create a kind of glass tunnel, like the kind of walkthrough tunnel that you'd see in some aquariums. And 
we'll be able to see fish swimming around on either side of us, walk out into the ocean opposite the monument and then hopefully get a glimpse at some of the guardians that would be spawning out there. We will of course need to name tag and trap a couple of those guardians though because if the mob switch is going to be on, which I intend it to be when people visit the museum, then the guardians aren't going to be spawning there naturally. You'll be able to get a glimpse of the elder guardians but not the regular kind. So I think it's going to be important for us to name tag a couple of guardians to make sure they are persistent in the world and then we're going to be able to have them on display for the museum. And there we go. We've breached out into the ocean. We've got, oh, actually like kind of flooded a cave down here that I may have explored whilst I was looking around this site. And I guess what we'll do is we'll just put a couple of fences and a fence gate here. Oh gosh, I've just dropped everything. And it looks like we just got hit by mining fatigue as well. I didn't even get the Elder Guardian face popping up that time, but yeah, it does seem like we just got hit by mining fatigue. I'm gonna block off this area with a fence gate and hopefully that should be okay. And I've actually come prepared for the mining fatigue eventuality. I brought a bucket of milk with me so we can dispel the effect real quick and then just remove that. And we get this lovely curtain of water. From there, of course, we can step out into the ocean. We can probably have like a glass observation tunnel that takes us over the top of the monument. But as you can see, no guardians spawning around here right now. We could literally walk in and say hello to the elder guardians if we wanted to, one of which is going to be up there in the top of the pyramid. What I'm thinking we'll end up doing is removing one of the walls here. You can see our little tunnel over there does not line up perfectly with the center of the monument, but the monument is also built on an even number, kind of like the end cities from the other day. So it's got a kind of even numbered entrance to it there. So we'll curve the tunnel around and then connect it to the side here. And then that top part of the monument will be open for people to come and take a look at the Elder Guardian. And of course the museum will provide buckets of milk because otherwise you'll end up with mining fatigue for the rest of your visit. So while we are working on the surroundings of the mob exhibit, I do want to start thinking about where we're going to get all of these mobs from. Of course the passive mobs are going to be nice and easy. The wandering trader has stopped by enough times and honestly without me even killing him has left enough leads in the surrounding area that I feel pretty comfortable we have enough for the foreseeable future and I can lead as many animals as I want to down into the mob exhibit. Finding them in this area is not going to be all that difficult. We've got a plains biome right here, so there's plenty of examples of cows, pigs, sheep, horses, chickens, the basic mobs that we're going to be finding in most biomes anyway. We will of course need to think a little bit further afield if we want to get some of the more biome specific things like foxes, arctic foxes, llamas, all of those kind of guys. We're probably going to have to make a special enclosure for the bat. The bat is going to have to be treated like the hostile mobs so that we don't end up with a bat escaping and just flying around the rest of the museum and the horse is walking precariously close to the edge which is why I made this such a wide spiral staircase to begin with but it looks like they're coming down here quite nicely the hostile mobs we're gonna have to start moving around with either boats or water streams or mine carts or some kind of combination of the above but now these mobs are down here all we need to do is separate them out so we can take the leads one by one we'll bring the horse in here and I think we'll need to break one of these in order to do it. Horses hitboxes aren't always uh, the right sort of size to fit through a fence gate. So there we go. We should now have a horse in the enclosure. And what a pretty horse, actually. I really like the look of this horse. The pattern, very, very nice. Lovely coloring. And I have no idea how good your running speed or jump height is, but we don't need to worry too much about that. The pig has just sat over here the entire time. So luckily he's going to be able to be easily led into this exhibit here. I can just hop over the fence gate. Perfect. Didn't even need to open it. And we could potentially decorate each of these enclosures a little bit more, like put in a little bit of grass path like that so that the pig feels like it's trampling the area and has a bit more of like a sty vibe to it. We could maybe put some hay in here with the cows and the sheep. And I was thinking about having this sort of like a petting zoo so that you could try out different foods for each animals and figure out which one they preferred to eat, that kind of thing. Maybe end up doing some animal breeding if we bring more than one mob in here but ultimately the fact that we have the mobs at all and they're in the right places is the most important aspect of this exhibit. The other thing I'm doing is waiting around for nights like this because of course phantoms will start to spawn. This one spawned right before dawn which could be a little bit of unfortunate timing but my idea here is that we're going to be able to trap one in a boat potentially if I can finagle it a little bit and the problem is phantoms AI is a little bit unpredictable. They tend to swoop down, 
like this. And if I can maybe get it trapped in a boat. Yes, there we go. Okay, now this. Now we have to act quickly because it will otherwise take a little bit of burning damage from the sun. But they don't attack particularly fast. So I should just be able to row the phantom on down here. And as long as we get out of the sun fast enough, it's not going to take any damage and burn up. There we go. I took a little bit of damage in there, but nope, looks like we are all good to go. So let's find a place for this in our ranks of creatures here. I think it's probably going to go down the end of this side, maybe closer to the undead mobs. So the kind of zombies and, and everything, strays, cave spiders, maybe at the end here. Maybe you will put a phantom exhibit at the end here. So these circumstantial mobs are the ones that it's going to be the most difficult to catch. I am not sleeping for the night so I can get hold of phantoms. Likewise, I need to wait for a thunderstorm to happen before I can get myself a charged creeper to go next to this creeper exhibit. So that's going to be a little bit of a tall order. I'm going to have to skip sleeping for a few nights just so I don't reset the weather cycle by sleeping. But outside of that, we should be good to go. And I think the rest of the mobs that I'm going to put in here aren't going to be all that difficult to catch once I disable the mob switch and just have mobs roaming around the museum. One thing's for sure, this is definitely going to be the noisiest part of the museum once I'm finished with it. Uh, I think my, yeah, my gold helmet is potentially at risk here if I'm maneuvering mobs around in a boat like this all the time. But as far as health goes, we're doing all right. And man, the phantom noises come from all around you when they're in a boat like that. So I I really wasn't quite sure how to deal with that. I put a glass roof up here as well because I know Phantom's AI tends to direct them towards the ceiling when they're just idle. They tend to fly up into the sky and swoop around a little bit. And what we're going to do is fill up all of this with glass and leave ourselves one block to end a pearl out of. So once we've taken it out of the boat, which we should be able to do like so, I can just end a pearl out of the enclosure, close it up, and we have a phantom in captivity just like that. How awesome is that? Unfortunately, it's not going to be the best exhibit of its movement because, like I said, it's just trying to get back up to a higher level of the world. But at least it's moving around a little bit so we can take a look at that texture in all its glory. Very happy with that, though. We've got a phantom. We can label up the enclosure. And from there, I think we'll move on to catching some more of these mobs. Okay, with a little bit more work done in here and some of the passive mobs going in, including an untamed wolf. Uh, I've attached it to the fence here, but this is not a wolf that I can right click on and have it sit. It is completely untamed, no collar or anything. I just decided to lead it down here in the end. What we're going to do now is bring all of the zombie variants, with the exception of the chicken jockey, and there's a good reason for that, into their respective exhibits. I've carved tunnels down into each of them, and hopefully we should have each of them just show up in these exhibits and then we can block off the back half of it. The water flows are going to be really useful here in keeping the mobs away from me while I seal them in there, but hopefully this should all go according to plan. Each of these mobs now has a series of glass tubes underneath it which are going to lead them down into that exhibit with the exception of the baby zombie chicken jockey because I want to treat this one very, very carefully. It's a rare one. It's got the baby zombie villager riding it. We just want that one to be preserved as best as we can. So all that remains to be done, I think, if I just place that there for a second, is just to drop the husk here into the tube. And we might need to nudge it, it looks like, because right now I think it is standing on the edge of that block next door somehow. But if I just end up crawling under here and push it with my shield out, hopefully we should be able to nudge it into... Yes, there we go. Okay, it's down there and this is going to be the first test. The husk is one of the more difficult ones to contain. We had to bring it all the way over from the desert. Let's head down to the mob exhibit and see if it's made it into the correct location. Well, the blocks certainly made it down here and it looks like the husk is making its way in as well. And it's trying to pathfind two other blocks in the area right now and it probably doesn't want to stick around in the water. But for the moment, it looks like the husk has found its way to the correct exhibit. We can head down there and block off the tunnel behind it and it should be trapped forever in the exhibit we have made for it. Now, I'm pretty confident that the other mobs will be in a similar position at this stage. So I'm gonna break out the floor 
underneath each one of those. Yep, there we go. The Drowned is on his way, and there should be water streams underneath each of these, which will prevent them taking any lethal damage as they fall here. We're going to have to do the baby zombie a little bit more carefully because the baby zombie can run into a one block gap, and if it pathfinds towards me before it has a chance to end up going down into this hole, then we might be in trouble here. But a trap door in the way should resolve that. There we go. Baby zombie is on its way down. And finally, the regular zombie, which we have a backup of anyway, so I don't need to worry too much if that one was an issue. But yep, there we go. They're all gone, and we can seal this thing up. Of course, the baby zombie chicken jockey is going to be the most challenging one to maneuver, but I'm just going to check that all of the other zombies are in place first. The baby zombie seems to have already made his way down here. That's very, very good. The drowned has not showed up, so I'm going to have to check on him. And the husk is sealed in there perfectly. There's just a couple of blocks of glass there that I'm going to have to let despawn. But I have a feeling the drowned is a little bit more agile in water, which may explain why the water stream hasn't propelled it down here the way we wanted it to. Glad the baby zombie is there now. The zombie has made his way in as well. So we're just going to have to check on the progress of the drowned, and then we can unleash the chicken jockey. I think it's actually down to the fact that the drowned can sort of float. They kind of have the mob equivalent of Depth Strider as well. They're a little bit more able to pathfind in water than other zombies are, but a couple of quick shoves with the shield out should mean we can carry him down to his holding cell where he has a nice kelpie environment waiting for him. We might also be able to cut off the water here and then the drowned will no longer be able to pathfind towards me. Yes, and he's gone into the water. Perfect. Okay, that was actually a pretty good decision because the drowned would just pathfind towards water sources so that it has something to stand in. And the drowned is in there. It's a little bit murky underwater, but hopefully they should pathfind around a little bit. So occasionally, like an exhibit at the zoo, you'll end up seeing the drowned coming up to the glass and you can get a closer look at it. I do maybe want to install a couple couple more dead bushes in the husk exhibit. They got washed away by the water. But now we have to turn our attention to the chicken jockey. And for that, I'm actually going to break this open and go and check on the route here because I think I had to cross over this with another route. Yeah, the dripping from above would indicate that that is the case. And if we just carve our way through here and then close this off, we should now have a viable route for the chicken jockey. The key here is really going to be making sure it has enough headroom because the chicken is probably going to bob up and down a little bit in the water and I don't want the baby zombie to have suffocated in overhead blocks by the time it reaches the exhibit. So I am just going to carve out a slightly higher space for it here, but it looks like the rest of this should be okay. Baby zombies being only one block tall after all and probably being kind of crouched on the hitbox of the chicken. Once again, I'm going to place the trapdoor here just to hope that the chicken doesn't decide to pathfind out of this area as we break this block and hop. There we go. The chicken jockey is on his way. Cross your fingers, folks. We'll see if he makes it to the mob exhibit in one piece. And there he is. Fantastic. Oh, that's incredible. We have a chicken jockey in place at the museum, and it's a zombie villager chicken jockey as well. So happy with that. We're going to go in and close up the rest of these tunnels, and then we should work on getting a few more of these, because the spider jockey still has to be moved down here, along with a couple of other mobs that we'll probably need to turn off the mob switch so that we can catch them locally.
I just want to... I want to be able to use his own AI to maneuver him into this hole. Yes! Yes, we did it. You are now property of the museum. Congratulations. Uh... <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Man, I love this game. I love this game so much. Oh, skeletons, you absolute fools. Sorry, just needed a bit of that I could capture for the episode. My chicken is getting wet. I'm brining it. I'm brining it. You should always brine your chicken. Here she comes. Fastest granny in the West. Beautiful. And heals herself to boot. to the mob exhibit and wait for him to drop in. He might get there before me at this rate. Pause champ. Pause champ. Something's gone wrong. No, there he is! Oh! <laughs> oh, yes! He completely missed the activator rail, but he's in! He's in, boys! Oh, boy, all right. Hey, folks, welcome back. So it has been a hectic little while here at the museum, but I gotta say, we are ever closer to getting this exhibit ironed out because we have been doing a lot of work over the last little while to get a few more mobs in here. We're not quite done and it looks like we are going to be doing this for a little while yet. We still got to get stuff like a charged creeper. We got a regular creeper in here now, but the uh, <laughs> amount of mobs that we have is slowly coming together and on a stream I actually went ahead and got all of the raid mobs. I figured that'd be a fun thing to do with a live audience. So we got a pillager, a vindicator, a ravager, and around the corner here, we got an evoker. Now, if you see mobs wandering around here, it is not because they've got out of their cages. It is because I have the mob switch off so that stuff like this can happen. This spider kind of spawned spontaneously in here and I've kind of been giving it the run around so that I can dig my way into this little box here hopefully open things up so the spider can hop on through and I've been making a couple of adjustments just to make sure that mobs like a spider won't climb up the wall and then drop and take full damage so some of the exhibits have earned a little bit more character in the process and have also got a few more blocks here and there around the place but unfortunately Given the amount of time I have left on the Minecraft survival guide in general, a lot of these exhibits had to be done kind of quick and dirty, I suppose. They're, they're kind of a little bit less detailed than I would like them to be, but ultimately it means that we get a little bit more done as a result, and maybe I can tweak them a little bit more before the world download comes out. But for the most part, this is really what we're working with. The spider seems to be stuck near the ceiling right now, so I'm just going to wander over here and show you that we've also got a few new arrivals in the form of some passive mobs. We've got some sheep over here. I've been working on getting, uh, you know, a few other bits and pieces. We have a fox over here. We have a, an orange fox. Uh, we got the, the red fox, and I do have the arctic fox that you saw me bring over 
in the little montage earlier on. I also picked up a slime on the stream. We managed to convince a skeleton to walk in here just based on its own AI movement trying to get away from me. And there are a couple of other mobs here and there that are still waiting to be added. We also got an Enderman in a boat on this side. I do want to get the rest of the Nether mobs accounted for though, and we have a uh, magma cube space opposite the slime. We have zombified piglin with a skeleton. There's a few others that can be brought to the overworld. And I am going to have to make a piglin bartering exhibit inside the nether itself because, of course, piglins won't be able to come to the overworld without zombifying. Will you just come down already? <laughs> right now, even though it is technically dark in here, so the spider should want to attack me. There we go. All right, come on in. This is your new home. Uh, I am kind of stuck in a web right now, so uh, you might be able to deal a little bit more damage to me than I'm used to. But hey, at least I can stand up, wander into this back corner here, and hopefully... If I can get past the spider, yes, ender pearl out into... Oh, okay, uh, I think I phased through the glass. I should not be in the exhibit with the baby zombie. This was a bit of an oversight. Well, I'm now ender pearling from exhibit to exhibit as I try and get this spider in here. This is turning into a little bit of a chaotic episode. And to be honest, the fact that getting mobs like this is such a chaotic endeavor is probably why I haven't got them all already because man the some of these are particularly troublesome the evoker in particular was really hard to get hold of there we go all right one last try at the spider I think we should be able to get the spider in here if I just run around here hop over this block and then we can try and at least place a couple of glass blocks in behind it and then just stroll on out of the gap and the spider should be trapped in there there we go none of this ender pearling nonsense we got the spider in there and I think, unfortunate though it is, that is where we're going to have to leave it because I'm simply out of time for this and the uh, release date of 1.17, the Caves and Cliffs update, is fast approaching, meaning that we are getting close to the end of the survival guide. Now, I am obviously going to be working on the world a little bit more. There is so much unfinished here at the museum that I do want to do a ton of work off camera, just making sure that we can iron out the final few things that I want to do at the museum and get the whole structure built. And naturally, with the focus of my content shifting to the new update on 1.17, I am not planning on doing any more of that for these episodes. So we're not going to be doing any more episodes of the Minecraft Survival Guide, with the exception of a world tour, which will be coming out tomorrow. And tomorrow is, of course, the date that the Caves and Cliffs Part 1 update arrives. So while you won't see an immediate Caves and Cliffs video from me, you should see one the following day as we kick off basically like a six-month adventure in Hardcore. What I've been thinking about doing is an intermediate or like more advanced survival guide in Hardcore where we kind of skip over a lot of the elements of the survival guide that assumes you don't know about Minecraft already and we try and do a bit more advanced stuff, move a little bit faster and cut out a little bit more of the fluff that tends to be added to these videos where I'm over explaining concepts for people who are newer to the game. But that means this really is kind of the final proper episode of the Minecraft survival guide with the exception of tomorrow's tour and I really want to say thank you for everything you've done for me and making this series a success and hopefully you've really enjoyed spending this time with me as we go through this series together. There will be plenty more in future. Once again, the Minecraft Survival Guide Season 2 will be starting once the second half of the Caves and Cliffs update arrives because such a dramatic change in terrain means that I really want to be exploring those new caves and discussing what's going to be the caving experience for the foreseeable future in like the earlier episodes of a series so that's why we're doing something a little bit different in between now and then and i hope you will enjoy the extra adventures that we get to have along the way but from this episode and from the minecraft survival guide thank you so much for watching my name has been pixarus please don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it subscribe if you want to see more and there will be more i'll see you guys soon take care bye for now